A public office is a public trust. Use your office to promote the common good. Shun corruption. Good evening, my name is Aisha Gambari. Welcome to this week's edition of the program, The Ego. Presenting with me is Aisha Mohammed. Hello. Hi, Aisha. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on the program. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. On the program today, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has been assured of unflinching support from the international community. Acting Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has called for synergy between the Commission and audit executives of banks in tackling corruption in Nigeria. And the United States of America Postal Inspection Service has expressed its readiness to support the EFCC in its efforts geared towards fighting corruption in Nigeria. Please stay tuned as the program continues shortly. Don't go away. My name is Augustine Alege and I'm the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. And I want to say that lawyers are all committed to defeating this scourge of corruption in Nigeria. And we are working hand in hand with the EFC to ensure that we rid our nation of this cause of corruption. All Nigerians should join hard in fighting corruption. Thank you and do your part any which way you can. Welcome back. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC has been assured of unflinching support from the international community. These assurances came as the Commission received a delegation from various international bodies, including Alexander Avizu, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, U.S. Department of State. Olufemi Adeyemi has the report. Avizu, who led four other members of his team to the Commission, said they were impressed by the performance of the EFCC, adding that the visit was also to discuss issues relating to anti-corruption and law enforcement affairs in Nigeria. He said the team also came to find out ways in which the American government can be of help to the Commission in delivering its mandate. We are, as I said, very proud of that partnership. We would like to hear from you, and, and first of all, thank you for working with Zhu and, and, and our team from the Embassy. But uh, as always, we would be very interested in hearing from you, uh, you know, areas uh, where you would, where you think we could be helpful in the future. Receiving the delegation on behalf of the acting chairman EFCC, Secretary to the Commission Imano Adeboiga Aramo thanked the United States for their tremendous support to the Commission so far, especially in training of the agency's staff. He told his guests that the Commission is in dire need of an office space and will need the assistance of the American government in completing its permanent site, which is still under construction. Normally, the place is required at least about two flats. But due to lack of space, I have to practically appeal it to the man doing the management flats so we can have other places to put other stuff. But if not, we are able to move to the other place. All these projects will be short. And that is why I wish you to visit the head office. Mm -hmm. Expect it. We see what is going what we are doing here. Thereafter, the acting chairman of the commission, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, led the visitors on an inspection tour of the polygraph room, which is the first and the best in the country so far. We were able to testify in court using polygraphs, and it's been considered as, 
with a conviction. From the polygraph room inspection, the delegation moved to the permanent site of the commission where they inspected facilities at the main office complex, the male and female cells, the 900 capacity parking lot, staff clinic, interrogation rooms and forensic office amongst others. The Eagle team had a brief chat with Arvizu after the tour. Corruption is a never-ending uh, battle. Um, you know, if you take uh, any common index like Transparency International, whether you're number one or number 200 on the list, um, there's always going to be corruption cases. And the important thing is for there to be forward progress. Uh, we feel, we in the United States uh, believe in our Nigerian partners. Uh, we're very uh, proud that uh, the people who are fighting corruption in Nigeria look to the United States uh, as one of its uh, principal partners um, to continue this fight. How fruitful has the relationship between the EFCC and your agency been? Well, I think it's excellent. Um, uh, you know, the work of INL here uh, in Nigeria is very important and we partner with many different agencies, but I don't think there is a more significant relationship than the one that we have with the EFCC. Um, it's a relationship that has produced good results and uh, frankly I think the best is yet to come. In a related development, the United States of America Postal Inspection Service has expressed its readiness to support the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in checking wire fraud and other organized crimes. Daniel Cortez, inspector in charge, headquarters operation of the agency, gave the assurance when he led a three-man delegation on a visit to the acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, at the commission's headquarters in Abuja. Cortez said the organization would assist the commission through seamless information exchange and partnership. Responding, Magu expressed his gratitude and the willingness of the commission to partner with the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. The EFCC boss called for support in the area of capacity building, especially on the usage of database and other skills to further enhance efforts geared towards tackling cybercrime cases. It will be recalled that in 2007, the EFCC, in collaboration with the U.S. Postal Service, carried out a postal interception exercise in Lagos, where many scam mails and parcels were intercepted. Olufemi Adeyemi, reporting for The Eagle. Acting Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has called for synergy between the Commission and the Association of Chief Audit Executives of Banks in tackling corruption in Nigeria. Magu made this call when he received members of the association in his office in Abuja. The report. According to the Antigraf Czar, the commission and members of the association are all stakeholders as far as the Antigraf war is concerned. He therefore called for their support as both auditors and investigators do the same thing. He assured the association of his readiness to support its work even beyond the corridors of banks. Nobody among us here, no credible person would want um fraudulent practice in anywhere, not only in where you work. So um, I thank you very much for coming. And uh, we are ready to support you. We are ready to collaborate with you. Earlier, Chairman of the Association, Ajobola Dawudu, commended the Commission for current efforts in the fight against corruption. He requested for the Commission's intervention in the areas of capacity building, creating effective liaison at its zonal offices, and helping to track fraud suspects who jump ship. According to him, the association meets quarterly, and it will be nice to have a representative of EFCC join them as a way to foster relationship and strengthen the fight against corruption. First, for the time, uh, congratulate uh, the acting chairman on his uh, well-deserved appointment as uh, acting chairman of the uh, Commission. Uh, it's, it's an honor well deserved, and uh, uh, without uh, flaunting him, uh, I think he fits this issue very well. And uh, I think in the in, in the first few days, he has uh, disabused the minds of uh, the few doubting. Thomas is about his ability to uh, fight corruption head on. And uh, for those of us who have been part of his workings while the uh, commission first started, we know he has uh, the wherewithal to go the distance. And uh, we pray that uh, Allah will guide him all the way. 
Now to our Lagos Zonal Office, where the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, also called on the civil society organizations, CSOs, to lend their support to the fight against economic and financial crimes in the country. Magu made the appeal during an interactive session with a coalition of civil society organizations at the Lagos Zonal Office of the Commission. He said the support of the group was critical at this crucial time as they mirror the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians who are also catalysts in the social mobilization process. He acknowledged the role of the CSOs in the fight against corruption, calling on them to sensitize the people on the ills of corruption and its consequences on the society. We are all in this together. It's by divine intervention that we happen to find ourselves at this end of the table. It could have been you here, me there, but that doesn't stop you. We are all stakeholders, we are all Nigerians. We want a better Nigeria in, for future generations. Suraju Olariwaju of the Civil Society's Network Against Corruption, who led the group, pledged the cooperation of the CSOs to the EFCC. Other speakers commended Magu for revamping the fight against corruption. Olufemi Adeyemi, reporting for the ego. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Glad to have you join us again. The program is The Eagle, coming to you from the EFCC. Now to court matters. In continuation of the ongoing trial of Harley Rubello, former chairman, board of trustees of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and his son, Abba, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has filed fresh evidence before Justice A.R. Muhammad of the Federal High Court in Abuja. The report. The EFCC had on January 5, 2015, arraigned Bello, his son Abba, and a firm, BAM Project and Properties Limited, owned by Abba, on four counts of money laundering involving a separate sum of 300 million naira security funds, which they allegedly received from Office of the National Security Advisor in March 2015. In the said suit, Halleru's son was charged as the first accused person, while the firm, BAM Project and Properties Limited, which was used to perpetrate the fraud, and the former PDP chair was cited as the second and third accused persons, respectively. The fresh evidence filed is to the effect that Halleru received the said sum from ONSA on February 27, 2015. The decision was taken in order to accommodate the two transactions of 150 million naira, which were said to have been carried out on February 27, 2015, that were not captured in the four counts against the accused persons. The funds were said to have been transferred to the accused persons by the embattled former National Security Advisor, NSA, Colonel Tsomba Dasuki, retired, 11 days to the 2015 presidential election. With this development, the defendant will be made to take fresh plea after which the case would continue where it stopped. It will be recalled that an operative of the EFCC, Rukayat Ibrahim, had earlier testified on February 16, 2016, that investigations revealed that Bella received 300 million naira from ONSA in two tranches of 150 million naira each. Ibrahim, who opened her testimony as the first prosecution witness, told the court, while being led in evidence by the prosecuting counsel, wrote to me Jacobs SAN, that the sum was transferred to BAM Project and Properties Limited from the account of Jabama Ada Global Services Limited on the instruction of the then Minister of State for Finance, Bashir Yogoda. According to the witness, Jabama a bureau the chain from was already being investigated in another matter for about 1.5 billion naira it allegedly received from ONSA before the discovery of the 300 million naira payment. The case has been adjourned to March 3, 2016 for cross-examination. Still on court matters, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC has also presented the sixth witness in the ongoing trial of a former Director General of Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency NIMASA, Patrick Apogbulekemi, and five others for the alleged diversion of over 2 billion naira. 
Others involved in the case include Captain Ezekiel Bala Agaba, Ekene Nwakuchi, Governor Ameche Juan, Blocks and Stones Limited, and Alkenzo Logistics Limited. At the resumed hearing, the prosecution counsel wrote to me Oyedepo, led one Uchenna Emanalu in evidence. Emanalu is the younger brother of Emeka Emanalu, the owner of O2 Services Limited, the company that was allegedly used to divert part of the proceeds from the Committee on International Shipping and Port Security in Nimasa. Emenalo told the court that he approached the third accused person, Ekene Nwakuche, as a former schoolmate to help him secure any contract that his brother's company, O2 Services Limited, could handle. He told the court how between March 2014 and June 2015, O2 Services Limited received over 100 million naira, which he personally disbursed based on instructions from the third accused person, Ekeni Nwakuchi. He said the third accused person provided him with different account numbers into which the said amount was paid. In his further evidence, the witness admitted that O2 Services Limited is into agro allied products and lacked competence in security related. During cross examination by Joseph Umubike SAN, the witness confirmed that Ekene told him that the contract was security related but that their company would be registered as RSO, Registered Security Organization. When asked by Adio, counsel to Ekene, whether he benefited from the money that was paid into O2 Services Limited account, the witness admitted receiving the sum of 600,000 naira for logistics and bank charges. The witness was later presented with some document which supposedly emanated from O2 Services Limited as contract application document and invoices for payment. After taking a close look at the document, the witness said the signatures on the document were neither his nor his brother's. He concluded his testimony that the contract awarded to his brother's company were never executed. If you've just joined us, the program is still the Eagle, coming to you from the EFCC. We will take another break, after which the program continues with feedback from our portals. Please stay tuned. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah Magadam. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear the have a special man that the don't of EMCC. I chose to be who are doing with to terminate other people with money. EMCC. As soon as I captured them, threat to prison. Yeah. Yeah. Chief. Yeah. Jail. Jail. Ah. Are you uh? Life yeah, are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. We know that people are didn't die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Thank you for staying tuned. You too can be part of this program by joining us on our feedback portals at Official EFCC on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Let's take some messages from those portals. Hamza Abubakar left a comment on Facebook. He said, EFCC is an organized crack team. A good head must always have a sound body. Keep protecting the interests of Nigerians. Our yams must be brought back by all means legally. Another Facebook user, Sonny Amirizi, said, Thank you, EFCC boss and all your staff for the good work you're doing in Nigeria. God bless. And Hassan Ababa sent an email via the eagle at efcc.nigeria.org and it goes, with what the EFCC is doing today, Nigeria will soon be free of corruption. Please don't leave any stone unturned in this fight. Nobody is above the law. And one Baba Ali Bulama also via Facebook said, No hiding place for treasury looters. Saad Kagarko tweeted, They are everywhere to deceive innocent people. Please advertise it through national dailies. 
And similar to that was another comment from one Hamza Abubakar. And he said, they took the advantage of what the EFCC boss was soliciting to the Senate during budget defense. Keep echoing the false alert because many people are already blind and bent to believe these frosters. These comments came after the commission announced the activities of unscrupulous individuals who created fake online portals to defraud unsuspecting job seekers under the guise that the EFCC is recruiting. The public should note that the commission is not recruiting. The commission does not advertise vacancies via online portals. Vacancies in the commission are usually publicized in national dailies or via the commission's website www.efccnigeria.org. The public should beware. That's it on the feedback segment. Thank you for your comments. We sincerely appreciate the efforts and support from all our followers. Please keep sending your comments. Next on the program is an important announcement. Please stay tuned. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, has reassured lawyers and judges that comments attributed to him in recent media reports regarding the conduct of judicial officials was not intended and impugning their integrity. According to him, his comments and activities of the commission should not be interpreted to mean a blanket indictment of all lawyers and judges, but rather directed at a few bad eggs within the system. He said, and I quote, There is no way one can make a blanket statement on the integrity of lawyers and judges. Nigeria is blessed with most of the best lawyers and judges on the African continent. My worry is that the bad ones amongst them are giving the good ones a bad name. End of quote. He emphasized that the commission deeply appreciates the support of most conscientious, upright and patriotic members of the bar and bench, including defense counsels, leading to the commission's unbeaten prosecution and conviction record. Margo stated further that, mindful of the fact that judges are constrained from publicly responding to criticism against them, the commission only employs legal and administrative procedures, including investigation of errant judicial officers and laying complaints against them before the National Judicial Council, NJC. In the same vein, the Commission has charged to court and secured convictions against a number of lawyers. The EFCC boss invites all patriotic members of the bar and the bench to join the renewed campaign against corruption and money laundering while exposing the corrupt among them. He said there is no blanket condemnation of lawyers and judges, but the corrupt few will not be spared. And with that announcement, we've come to the end of this week's edition of The Eagle. But before we go, a quick look at our headlines today. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has been assured of unflinching support from the international community. These assurances came as the Commission received a delegation from various international bodies, amongst whom is Alexander Avizu, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, U.S. Department of State. We also brought you a report on the ongoing trial of a former Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa, Patrick Apopolo Kemi, and five others for the alleged diversion of over two billion naira. And that's it on today's edition of the program. Please don't forget to send your feedback to us via the eagle at efccnigeria.org. Like our page on facebook.com for slash official EFCC or search for us on Google Plus at official EFCC. You can also follow us on Twitter at official EFCC and to catch up with all our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com for slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Good evening. And I'm Aisha Gambari, hoping to see you next week. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>